Okay guys, I have another rotten review for you. On this episode, I take a look at uh, the 2009 film The Men Who Stare at Goats with George Clooney and Ewan McGregor. It has a 50% on the tomato meter and a 39% on the audience score. There are more than 239,000 audience reviews on the audience score. It is certainly rotten, and I just went over this film, watched it again in the last few hours to refresh myself on it, and I will agree, it's pretty much rotten. And the reason I say that is because it commits the cardinal sin of all movie and uh, literature. It actually was mostly boring, and uh, that makes it rotten. Now, this is a dark comedy of sorts, but the problem is the comedy is very, um, very unfunny. Uh, there are few, if any, laughs in this entire movie. Um, I'm really surprised because with the way uh, George Clooney and Ewan McGregor act and the roles they're playing and the circumstances that they find themselves in, I would have thought that this would have laughs at least a few times where I would find myself laughing out loud. But no, it never quite gets there. Uh, and I'm not the hardest person to please on a comedy, and I can appreciate a dark comedy. Uh, but this one doesn't have anything worthy of the name dark comedy. It is, uh, at times, it seems to have some kind of messaging, uh, not quite anti-war, not quite uh, anti-military, but it borders and skirts on that, like teases with it, but doesn't quite try to tell you anything there. And I was left at the end of this movie just a little bit confused as to what any message uh, would have been. Um, at the end, it kind of becomes a disillusioned uh, journalist story, and you have a, a journalist who uh, he's found out that uh, all the work he's done um, throughout the years, I guess, has been pretty much for nothing, or at least to him it added all up to nothing. And that's the way I felt at the end of this film, like it added up to nothing. I wasn't sure what they were trying to say. Again, I, it, it did kind of skirt with some um, anti-military type stuff, but it didn't go all the way, and it was inconsistent, and they put it in places where it was hard to tell if we were, we, we were supposed to take it serious or we were supposed to find it just a, a spoof or a comedy. Either way, I didn't laugh. I wasn't sure what they were going for here. And uh, it also has a performance by Kevin Spacey. Um, he shows up uh, and has... Um, you know, quite to, a, a bit to do with the end of the film, more than the rest of it. He doesn't really do anything that's laugh out loud funny either. Uh, and that's very surprising because there are, you know, there's a, a particular scene at the end of this film involving drugs, and you would think that it would be funny, but no, it's not. And um, I'm not sure who laughs at this, but I don't laugh at it at all. I, I wanted to, but I just couldn't. Uh, I didn't find the comedy there. So let's get right into the audience reviews. Here's one from November 12th, 2019, making it about one month ago. Uh, five stars. My absolute favorite film of all time. The humor is perfect and is acted superbly by the all-star cast. Yeah, if it had only been that, you know, it's not I wish it would have been that type of movie. In fact, this is like a one, one and a half star film because it really doesn't go anywhere. Um, it's It meanders all over the place and it can't quite get to two stars. So I say one and a half stars max. Um, and uh, yeah, five stars, it's like you're watching a different movie because this one's all over the place plot wise and thematically it's all over the place. Uh, two stars, September 25th. A couple laughs here and there would not recommend to most people. I'll largely agree with that, but I didn't even get a couple of laughs. I guess you could, depending on your personality and, you know, it's subjective, but um, I almost came close to laughing a couple of times, so maybe some people did laugh. Uh, here's one from September 10th, uh, two and a half stars. Now more than ever, we need the Jedi. The Men Who Stare at Goats is a quirky, offbeat comedy based on an expose of the U.S. Army's research into the paranormal. When war journalist Bob Wilton has a chance meeting with a contractor in Afghanistan, he learns about a secret U.S. military program to train psychic Jedi to develop their mental abilities in order to conduct psychic warfare. The film features an all-star cast. That includes George Clooney, Ewan McGregor, Jeff Bridges, and Kevin Spacey. That's a very nice synopsis. I'm not going to uh, read more on that. 
I prefer an actual review of what's wrong with the film and I'm just going to say with all those actors you would think that you would find something here but largely it's just a waste uh, I wish it would have been more funny I wish I would have laughed I'm very surprised that I didn't it's just not quite there they they needed a comedy writer and it's like they didn't have one uh, the film had a very serious tone to it and even the stuff that should have been funny was played too serious let's move on August 19th 2019 one and a half stars almost funny are the best words I can think of to describe this film yes bingo 100 percent I agree almost funny is the perfect description um, there are a lot of Star Wars references, particular uh, Jedi, calling themselves Jedi. And even in one part of the movie, they definitely riff on the fact that Ewan McGregor played Obi-Wan Kenobi, a, an actual Jedi, in the Star Wars prequel films in the 90s. Um, and they actually make fun of that, just kind of a wink and a nod, uh, calling him a Jedi on more than one occasion and yes there's a lot of other Star Wars movies in this uh, Star Wars references in this movie some it played to comedy effect and some just uh, put in there as references and none of it's really funny or effective it's just uh, you know you're reminded that Ewan McGregor played Obi-Wan and uh, that's about all it's worth really uh, three stars August 3rd 2019 it's humorous not overly great considering the cast but acceptable um, not quite humorous, I'm sorry, I say one and a half stars. Um, ex considering the cast, it's really disappointing. A, a movie with those cast members should have been a slam dunk, a home run if it were. No, it wasn't, it was very disappointing. Four stars, August 1st. The Men Who Stare at Goats doesn't hesitate to make fun of our military. It's actually pretty funny. And George Clooney's performance is the best out of all of them. Yes, it does try to make fun of the military, but it's just not funny. You know, um, at the beginning of the movie, it's kind of showing you the circular logic that the military has. Uh, you know, the old joke about military intelligence. There's really no intelligence to be found. Very circular logic uh, that gets the U.S. and the U.S. military into a lot of trouble sometimes. Um, and you'll know what I mean, I guess, but not from this film. You'll get that message um, in a lot better ways from a lot of other films. This one tries to do that, but uh, it just doesn't quite pull it off. You kind of see what they were trying to do, but it doesn't quite get there. Uh, one star, July 9th, 2019. Unless you are studying the intricacies of bad filmmaking, you should skip this flick. Despite good acting by a stellar cast, the movie lacks a strong underlying theme. Just when you think something recalling clever and funny is about to spring out of this out of this dismal drag of film, the dialogue and scenes fall flat. The movie is all over the place and at times it's just embarrassing and painful to watch. I 100% agree with that statement. Uh, just when you think something clever and funny is about to happen, it just comes out real flat and boring. And... Um, yeah, and you can see what they're trying to do. It they just never get there. They never. It's like somebody telling you jokes, but their timing is off, and they're just not good at giving the punchline. And you, they keep telling you all these jokes that would be, you know, slam dunk jokes that regular people could probably tell and get a laugh out of somebody. And yet, for some reason, there's those people out there that they just don't have comedic timing. And no matter what joke they set up to tell, the delivery is always just off, and nobody laughs. And that's the way this film comes across, like an entire film made up of humor like that. But you can see what they were trying to do. It just doesn't work. Uh, February 18th, 2019, three and a half stars. The story is wonky, but the cast is aces and really carry the movie. Yeah, the story is really wonky because it's not real focused. Um, every time you think you know where the story is going, it kind of diverts off onto a tangent and then goes off on another tangent later. It's all over the place, really. It's kind of messy, and there's no real meaning to it. A lot of things seem to happen, and you think they're going to mean something, but they never do. It's I call it just uh, chaotic. Uh, three and a half stars, February 1st, 2019. The Men Who Stare at Goats is pretty good. Clooney kills it. Rad storyline, solid acting, but kind of lame ending. I give this film 7 out of 10. No, it's not all that. I'm glad somebody enjoyed it. More power to you, but um, I was just thoroughly disappointed. I will say it had a few... Um, 
It had a few set choices that the ordinary audience goer probably wouldn't have noticed, but I did for a particularly personal reason. Um, much of this was set in the New Mexico area, some around Roswell, New Mexico, and some around Albuquerque. It was quite obvious to me where the, um, you know, this Fort Bragg setting that they have in the movie. They say it's Fort Bragg. It has a sign on the outside gate saying that it's Fort Bragg, which is in Texas, right? Or, no, I'm sorry, that my mistake. Uh, Fort Bragg is actually uh, in one of the Carolinas. In any case, they call this Fort Bragg, and it's actually um, a two-year junior college slash high school that's in Roswell, New Mexico, a military school called New Mexico Military Institute. I recognized it because I went to that uh, school at one point uh, in the late 80s. So I recognized this place 100%, and it was good to see it in the film, but it's certainly not Fort Bragg. Now, the average audience goer, maybe it would have passed for Fort Bragg to them, uh, but I'm sorry, it was in New Mexico. And, you know... I'm not sure if that's a function of the budget of this movie that they chose these places like you can tell some of it was shot in Southern California some of it was shot in New Mexico um, there may have been some other minor locations in the US but it certainly wasn't shot overseas where it was supposed to be that had to be a budget decision um, maybe all those big actors sucked up all the budget now a regular audience goer probably wouldn't have noticed it so much that wasn't the film's flaw the film's flaw was that it was just boring and it kind of meandered all over the place and there wasn't humor to be found but let's move on um, five whole stars this movie is truly hilarious. Great performances by all involved. Conclusion was pretty out there, so I take a half off for that. So you would have given it five stars, but you're saying that uh, the conclusion wasn't good. I'm sorry, but uh, the conclusion... The conclusion wasn't the problem here. The conclusion was like much of the rest of the movie. It just didn't have a message to it. There wasn't a point to it. Um, just to give you a real quick recap and a spoiler, there's a journalist that's the main focus of the story at the beginning of the film. In a coincidence, kind of like a coincidence that starts the plot off, he runs into a military character, uh, George Clooney. And there's a lot of flashbacks and backstory that's given to you during the course of conversations between these two characters. That's kind of interesting, but then... Um, the, during the course of the backstory, it's shown that uh, this top secret uh, psychic military program that George Clooney was a part of, you know, military members actually thought that by meditating in certain ways, they could walk through walls and etc. Um, and then at the end of the movie, the journalist, after he's back in his office somewhere, um, wherever he's based out of at the newspaper, he decides to meditate and then he runs through one of the walls and that's how the movie ends. And you don't know why, I mean, you get why they're doing it, like it fits in with the other stuff in the story, but you're not sure what message they're trying to deliver, like there is, must be some point to it, but yet you, you're, I could not figure out for the life of me what the point was, what the point of this whole film was, were they trying to make fun of journalists, were they trying to make fun of the military, were they trying to say that uh, somebody that has a journalism career is going to end up disillusioned at the end of it, um, I don't know what they were trying to say because uh, the film just left a big question mark for me, I don't consider it like something that happened necessarily in the plot that was bad at the end, the end just like had no point to it. In any case, let's move on. June 18th, four stars. I really don't understand why people hated this movie. It's hysterical, clever, dry, and flat-out nonsensical. Fantastic cast and extremely entertaining. Well, maybe somewhere on Earth this type of humor is better. It hits people better than it does in the United States. But where I come from in the United States of America, uh, there's very little to laugh out here. Um, I mean, it's just not funny. You, you can see how they're trying to be funny, but it's just not. Maybe in some other country, maybe in Great Britain or in the south of France or wherever, Eastern Europe, maybe this is funny, assuming that you understand all the English humor, uh, English language humor. But it's not funny where I come from, and uh, that's why this is rotten. Uh, June 9th, 2018, three and a half stars, some laughs, but could have been better. No laughs, it could have been a lot better, it's very disappointing. Uh, May 28th, 2018, five whole stars. This movie is one of the best dry comedies I've ever seen. I know what dry comedy is. I'm a big fan of it in a lot of ways, uh, going back 30, 40 years. Uh, material that goes back 60 years um, I can enjoy that's considered uh, dry comedy. 
a lot of British stuff, for example. Um, this is dry comedy? No, I think this is just comedy that doesn't work right. It's like mistimed. It's like I said, it's somebody telling jokes that their timing just isn't right. Um, and it's not just the style of comedy. Uh, it's considered a dark comedy. There's a lot of negative stuff happening in this movie that you're supposed to find humor in. This isn't dry, though. It's just like mistimed. Um, it's like somebody wrote it that wasn't used to writing comedy. Uh, two stars, May 12, 2018. It's funny at some moments and boring others. Not quite sure it's worth the time. It's boring in a lot of moments. In fact, it feels like a much longer film. It felt like it was a solid two-hour film, and it's not. Um, in fact, the running time on this, uh, I should have look, looked it up ahead of time. The running time uh, is 90 minutes, according to the blurb on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, 90 minutes but it feels like two hours or more because yeah it just gets boring you know these two characters George Clooney and uh, Ewan McGregor are on an adventure of sorts uh, at one point in the movie and yet you're bored during long stretches of it and there's a lot of flashbacks and historic you know people talking about their backstory mostly George Clooney talking about his uh, previous um, experiences in this uh, psychic military unit a lot of it takes place in the past kind of a like a backstory flashback thing and that's interesting but um, again it's just all the stuff that's happening in the current time of the film it's just boring like they're trekking across the desert and it's just boring um, two and a half stars or two stars bland lame George Looney movie so March 25th 2018 that's not a fan of George Clooney but you know George Clooney actually does uh, what he does in the movies where he does work as a comedian um, he performs fine here it's just the writing the writing is very bad it's like somebody wrote it that doesn't know how to do comedy uh, but George Clooney's performance was just fine it should have been funny same thing with Kevin Spacey it should have been funny it just wasn't written the right way. Uh, four and a half stars, February 7th, 2018. This movie is uh, something expletive awesome, so effing awesome, maybe. I would say no, again, where are you from? It's too bad these people aren't telling me where they're from. I, I doubt they're from the United States because uh, this is not the type of humor we consider funny. It's just boring. Um, half a star, January 18th, 2018. The most pointless, ridiculous movie I've ever witnessed. Um, no, it's not that bad. There's far worse. I've talked about far worse on this show. Uh, half a star. No, this is one and a half stars. I sat through the whole thing. If this were half star, I would have been tempted to shut it off or fast forward through it or something. And I wasn't. It wasn't that bad. Uh, September 26, 2017. We're going quite back in time now. Two years plus. Uh, five whole stars. The people who don't like this fall mostly into two categories. They only think movies have value if they follow known set pieces, or they only think movies have value if they're depressing. Unfortunately, it is these people who are the most likely to write reviews of films, those with the greatest need to make sure their opinions are heard. The Men Who Stare at Goats is a great movie. It is unique. It is more true than such examples as The Social Network or Lincoln, and more interesting as well. Uh, wrong, wrong, and wrong. Uh, first of all, uh, if you think that I'm... Uh, saying this is that this is a rotten film because um, I don't agree with the unknown set piece as well. I know exactly where a lot of this film was filmed because I've stood in the same buildings and in the very same spot it was filmed. I recognized it right away. Uh, it, it had nothing to do with the fact that this movie was funny or it wasn't funny. It just wasn't funny. It could have been set anywhere. It could have been set in my backyard. I still wouldn't have found this funny. Um, now, saying that this is... Uh, you know, this is better than The Social Network? Uh, wow. I'm not saying The Social Network is like five-star film, but wow, it's a lot better than this. It's funnier than this. It's more interesting than this. Uh, I'm sorry, you're completely out to lunch. And Lincoln, uh, personally, Lincoln's not my thing. I tried to get into it. It's a very slow, boring, overly detailed uh, historical drama that I personally didn't enjoy. But since everybody else out there I've talked to is saying how great it is, I'll have to disagree with you. You're the one that's wrong. So let's move on. Five star, no way. This is one and a half stars max. 
uh, four stars, April 10th, 2017. When we see ourselves doing or not doing, we rather see ourselves doing what can make a difference. We join the army. When we see our not fighters but journalists to see what new tactics we don't usually... I don't know what this person's saying. They're trying to be clever, um, talk like they some kind of weird, uh, weird character from the movie. It doesn't work, and your four stars are ridiculous, and shame on you. Uh, three stars, February 1st, 2017. It's good movie to watch. Yeah, guess what? You've pasted that same comment from this same Muhammad A on, like, at least 40 different films that I've reviewed. Um, I recognized it quite a while ago. Why is it? Who is doing this and why? I don't know. Maybe somebody will tell me one of these days why this Muhammad A comment is on almost every film on Rotten Tomatoes. Is it a bot? Like somebody testing a bot? Maybe. One of these days somebody's probably going to tell me what's going on with that. In any case, November 18, 2016, three and a half stars. This film was adorable. The Silence of the Goats, Jeff Bridges in his element. Uh, I'll take that as uh, sarcasm. Um, you know, when they say the men who stare at goats, there was only one scene where George Clooney, he stared at a goat and made it have a heart attack and fall over dead. The movie alludes to that a lot, and there are herds of goats that are in a like a pin on this military base in the final act of the movie. It's unknown what they're planning on doing with these goats. They're just crowded in a pen. Uh, they're kind of in there to suggest that they're going to do something with the goats, but there's no point to the goats. And that's another weird thing at the movie. Uh, you know, at the end of the movie, they're at this military base that's supposed to be in Iraq. It's probably in Southern California, like somewhere around Fort Irwin, something like that. But in any case, um, there's a bunch of goats in this military base, and it's not really stated in the movie what they're planning on doing with these goats, what they're for. You're just supposed to assume they're part of some psychic uh, stuff. It's very weird. It's like one of the things at the last part of the movie that doesn't add up. It doesn't have a point to it and just leaves a bunch of question marks in your mind if you try to think about it. Making this rotten. It, it just brings this film into rotten territory. September 5th, 2016. Three and a half stars. Based on a true story, you decide. But quite amusing to watch while you think about it. Uh, there's very little about this that's true. You know, the beginning and middle of the movie name drop a lot of names. They might be real names. They might be names based on real people, but they're not the correct name. But they say these names with authority, like they're trying to convince you that these are actual um, historical figures in this uh, uh, remote viewing military project. I seriously doubt that, though. None of these names ring out to me as being familiar sounding, and I've seen the literature on the stuff that supposedly was real that's historical and none of these names popped out to me as being in my memory so I'm thinking the movie just like threw in a lot of authoritative sounding names and expected us to believe it's like parts of the true story that this is based on but I'm gonna call bullshit on that and say that uh, it wasn't effective because it didn't feel real to me at all it just film it felt like they were name dropping a lot of stuff that wasn't real uh, there's very little of real stuff in this movie, and again, everything that happens in the movie is predicated upon one particular coincidence that happens uh, in the first uh, act. So, you know, you can do that once in a story, but it better go somewhere, and this movie uh, didn't really do anything with it. It didn't go anywhere. Mm, so it's just not good. It's rotten. Uh, four stars, June 23rd, 2016. Being a Star Wars fan, it's surprising that much of the allusion to the Jedi culture is used to explain a psychic spy branch in the United States Army of all the strange things the military could ever do. It shines with such a premise that seems zany yet believable, and many cast members who run the gamut from serious to outrageous. The film sets itself apart from other out-of-this-world experiences by separating itself from the usual war parody genre by providing a misunderstood alternative. Well, you know, this reviewer, I totally disagree on the four stars. Again, one and a half stars. But I will uh, congratulate this viewer for bringing a few things up here. Yes, it's going to try to do some parody of the U.S. military. It starts out that way, trying to show you a scene from Vietnam. And it starts out like it wants to make you laugh, and then it shows you dead bodies and stuff, and it's not funny. And it's, again, what I said before, it's like the movie was supposed to be a dark comedy. It was supposed to have comedy, 
but yet the writer just didn't know how to execute that. So you see what they were trying to do, and it's just ineffective, and you're left wondering why why uh, you're on this journey with these characters. Why are you getting all this information and backstories that's supposed to mean something, and then it never does? Um, yes, there are zany and outrageous things that some characters do at points, but it's not funny, and it doesn't lead anywhere. And it just can't stick to that. You know, it'll have one scene where something zany and outrageous happens. And then right when it's going to become funny, all of a sudden it just shifts off in another direction, goes on another tangent, and becomes serious again. Completely unworkable again. I'm just restating again. The, the comedy aspect of this was completely um, unworkable. And, you know, so many Star Wars references. And they even at one point, they reference that, you know, they've got this budget for this big base at the end of the movie. Why? Uh, why do they have this big budget when uh, nothing's really panned out on this psychic research? Oh, it's because, well, you know, Ronald Reagan was a big Star Wars fan. That was one line they threw in there about why they had all this budget for this weird psychic program. Ronald Reagan was a Star Wars fan. No, Ronald Reagan backed something called Star Wars uh, in the colloquial term, which was actually called the Strategic Defense Initiative, SDI. It was a program to, they're still presumably working on it today in some way, using satellite technology to uh, particle beam weapons to shoot down incoming nuclear warheads. Uh, that was known back in the day as the Star Wars Space Defense Program. Uh, Reagan was involved in approving that. Uh, but no, Reagan just wasn't just flat out a Star Wars fanboy of some kind. I'm sorry, and that's not the way it worked, and that's not why this weird psychic um, program got funded, not even in the real world that it's, you know, the real story this is based on. But it was just weird to see them shoehorn so much Star Wars stuff into this. Very weird. Whoever wrote it was more of a Star Wars fan, but not so good of a comedy writer, apparently. June 18th, 2016, five whole stars. Not for everyone. It takes a certain level of enlightenment to appreciate this movie. Wow. Well, you know, this is like the second movie with Jeff uh, Bridges that somebody's told me that. The first movie with Jeff Bridges is The Big Lebowski. This is certainly not a Big Lebowski film. It's not a Coen Brothers film. And um, I can't really get into the Big Lebowski either. This person's like, again, it's another Jeff Bridges movie that they're trying to tell me I have to be enlightened to get the humor. I'm sorry, but I'm going to disagree. Uh, this is considered a rotten film. I'm not. This is not a contrarian episode of Rotten Reviews like it was for the Big Lebowski. Um, enlightened? I'm sorry. You're wrong. Completely out to lunch. Three stars, April 20th, 2016. It's not new in Hollywood to present bland silliness and satire packaged with utmost seriousness. The Men Who Stare at Goats comes off initially as a potential winner from this genre. While it had the necessary humor and a stellar star cast capable of enacting that, the script neither, neither reaches the edginess it should have nor pushes the boundary to make this movie memorable. Bob Wilton, Ewan McGregor, is a journalist by profession and going through a professional and personal crisis. Yeah, um, Ewan McGregor's journalist is going through a lot of crisis. Uh, his girlfriend or wife or fiance, whoever she is, has left, left him and shacked up with her editor at the paper. And so he sets off to go to Iraq to be a war correspondent. And then there's a big coincidence where he runs into George Clooney's character. And everything else in the movie is because of that one coincidence that happened in presumably in Baghdad. This is uh, set in 2003, of course, during the uh, middle of the uh, 2003 Iraq War. There's, uh, you know, there's so much potential there, and yet it just doesn't go anywhere. Half a star, February 21st, 2016. Exceptionally terrible. Avoid at all costs. Yeah, I'll say avoid it because you don't get anything out of this. It, it does suck up your time. It feels longer than it really is. You're not going to get anything out of this. Three and a half stars, December 31st, 2015. Very funny and assured throughout. I'm sorry, it's not. Back in 2015. August 21st, 2015. Three stars. Weird stuff, but I like weird stuff. Also, Kevin Spacey on LSD. Yeah, there's a scene at the end where uh, Jeff Bridges' character puts LSD into the water and into the eggs of the uh, military base in Iraq, and all the soldiers are wigged out on LSD, and 
I never got the point of that at all. It doesn't really have a point. It should have been funny. It should have been a lot funnier than it even was, but it wasn't. It was just kind of a waste of an interesting idea, like a lot of the movie. Uh, four stars, August 21st, 2015, sparkly eyes technique. Yeah, there's some weird stuff where it should have been funny, but it wasn't. George Clooney is explaining the sparkly eyes technique of interrogating prisoners, where he just leers at you from the sides of his eyes. Um, it's the kind of goofy stuff that should have been funny, but it wasn't. A lot of weird stuff like that in this movie that's like you're just wondering, how come they couldn't make this funny? Why? It, it's, it should have been a no-brainer. It should have been a slam dunk of a movie. Um, and then it just wasn't funny. Uh, August 5th, 2015, one and a half stars. This satire comedy led by an all-star cast is funny to begin with, but soon that novelty wears off and suddenly you're left with a boring movie which seems to be going around in circles with no progression to the story and the continuation of overly pretentious jokes. Both Clooney and McGregor's characters are likable. It's just the story is completely pointless and the jokes fail to carry it over the line. I wouldn't waste your time with this movie at all. I agree 100%. It's like you can see the jokes, but they just don't get there. They don't work. You don't laugh. Uh, three and a half stars, August 2nd, 2015. The particularly strong cast and interesting, inspired by true events premise, falls slightly short of the sum of their parts, but is still a gently amusing farce. No, it isn't all that. Just avoid this one, please. You're not going to laugh. Three stars, July 28th, 2015. George was awesome, and yeah, yeah, I would say his performance was good, but the script was crap. He didn't have anything to work with, but George Clooney performed just fine, no question. Uh, three stars, July 26, 2015. Although its story is at points completely off the wall and hilarious, a cast that predominantly are fantastic, any script that works reasonably well, no, it doesn't. The Men Who Stare at Goats falls short of one too many critical moments to make this a memorable classic. That's not to say it's not a good slice of fun. It is, and there is no better evidence than the actors involved in the picture that prove this. A down on his luck reporter, blah, blah, blah. No, it, it isn't all that. Um, it should have been funny again, but it wasn't. Um, how could they lose with all these characters, with this cast? Somehow they did. Somehow they fucked it up. Four stars, June 2nd, 2015. I found this movie funny. Ha ha, out loud, ha ha, funny. Read up on Project MK Ultra first so you realize our military probably had has some similar characters. Yeah, it mentions MK Ultra. It mentions using uh, LSD experiments on soldiers. Yeah, so what? We've heard all this before. And you know, it should have been funny the way they did that in this movie. And it wasn't funny. It was just kind of weird and didn't go anywhere and there were no laughs to be found. Three and a half stars, April 24th, 2015. Grant Hesloff still continuing to work with George Clooney through Smokehouse Pictures. However, this time he chooses to direct and the results are mostly good. No, they're not. Despite the film not really having confidence in itself, the men who stare at goats in a word can be described as interesting. Yeah, it started off as interesting, and then about 20 minutes in, you realized uh, it wasn't interesting anymore. Continuing, for the first half, I'd say that while its jokes were sprinkled throughout quite well, as well as the satire, satire being pretty good, the longer it went on, it didn't really know what it was doing. I never thought it should be a film you laugh at. Uh, yeah, there, why are you giving this three and a half stars? You just basically agreed with me. The film doesn't know where it's going or what it's doing, and it's not even that funny. This is one and a half stars. Three and a half stars. Not enough goats to make this movie funny. Then why are you giving it three and a half stars? Because you love goats that much? There were goats. At the end, you saw at least like 30 goats. Okay, wow, well, if goats are your thing. Otherwise, this should be one and a half stars at the maximum. Three stars, May 21st, the story of the true Jedi Masters. No, sorry. Five stars, three stars. Look at this. One and a half stars, November 28, 2014. We're quite a, we're five years back in time now. Though it stars wonderful actors, this is horrendous. The entire concept is ludicrous, and hearing these actors speak the pathetic dialogue almost made me ill. What a waste of talent. 
How do movies like this get made? Yeah, exactly. What a waste of talent. It's very depression, depressing and disappointing. You see all these people in this and you're wondering, why aren't I laughing? Like, why? what's going on here? Who wrote this script? Uh, one and a half stars, October 13, 2014. So boring, I couldn't finish it. Uh, it came close, yeah. I, I almost was thinking about that. Uh, but I, I made it through somehow. One and a half stars, August 26, 2014. Sometimes people complain that movies based on true stories deviate way too much from the truth. Well, this is a great example of a movie that does not do that. This film stays loyal to the actual events for the most part, and the results are atrocious. I, for one, think that there should have been a lot more Hollywood in this one. Well, you know, I don't know about that. I don't know if this is similar to a real event or events or not. I'm thinking it isn't, but if it is, yeah, it was a mistake. They should have put more Hollywood stuff into it because it's clearly the writing that failed on this one. Somebody wrote this and just didn't understand comedy. All the other elements were there. It's very disappointing that I didn't laugh. I should have. I really should have. It's just got to be the writing. 39% uh, on the audience score. Yeah, that's fair, but it could go even to 29% because it's kind of off-putting that there's no laughs to be found with all those characters there. And they're mostly performing well, too. 50% uh, on the tomato meter. I don't know why the critics, half of them like this. Um, who knows on the critics? But personally, I don't recommend this unless you just got time to absolutely kill because it's just going to waste your time. And I will see you again on the next episode of Rotten Reviews.